William Marshall, one of the greatest knights in history, born in 1146 during the Anarchy, a civil war that tore England apart. A loyal knight of Patrick of Salisbury found himself facing Guy de Lusignan, a key supporter of the rebellion. It was a fierce and chaotic battle, with the fate of the kingdom hanging in the balance. With swords clashing and horses thundering, the battlefield is filled with the sounds of war. William Marshall, skilled and fearless, cuts through enemy lines, seeking out his opponent, Guy de Lusignan. As they engage in combat, William's strength and determination shine through, allowing him to gain the upper hand and capture Guy de Lusignan. But this victory comes at a cost, as Hugh de Lusignan, Guy's brother, and his men quickly surround William. Release my brother or you'll die for your stubbornness. I will not give up my prize. I will only surrender him to my Lord Patrick of Salisbury. As William remains defiant, Hugh de Lusignan's men tighten the circle around him, their weapons pointed at him menacingly. William Marshall is trapped by his enemies. He has no hope of escape, no allies to help him, no mercy to expect. I killed your Uncle Salisbury at Poitiers. Now it is your turn to die. Then you are a traitor and a coward, Hugh. You betrayed your king and oath. Suddenly, Baldwin de Guy and his knights charge into the scene, breaking the circle as they approach. As Baldwin's knights clash with Hugh de Lusignan's men, William and Baldwin fight side by side, expertly taking down enemies. Smoke and dust rise from the battlefield, creating a dramatic atmosphere. Together, William and Baldwin bravely hold off their attackers. As the fighting subsides and they emerge victorious, William captures Guy de Lusignan for ransom. But Hugh de Lusignan and a few men escaped. William's bravery caught the attention of King Henry II, who took him into his service. Now, fighting for King Henry II, William faces his greatest challenge yet, battling against the king's own sons. In a world driven by greed, William fought for King Henry II against his rebellious sons, allied with French King Louis VII. Amid the revolt of 1173 to 74, the pivotal Battle of Fornham erupted, where young royals challenged the Angevin Empire's power. William confronted Richard's army, bolstered by Flemish mercenaries led by Earl Robert de Beaumont. As fierce combat unfolded on Fornham's river-divided fields, William captured Robert and his armored wife Petronilla, crushing the rebellion and strengthening King Henry's rule. After the Battle of Fornham and the subsequent end of the revolt of 1173 to 74, Richard eventually reconciled with his father, King Henry II. But when Richard the Lionheart ascended the throne after his father's demise, William faced the daunting challenge of serving the man he once vanquished. As history's shadows loomed, William's loyalty would be tested in a realm of ever-changing allegiances and uncharted destinies. William rose to the occasion, unyieldingly earning Richard's trust and admiration. Acknowledging William's unwavering loyalty and martial prowess, Richard appointed him a key advisor, entrusting him with crucial responsibilities. When Richard embarked on the Third Crusade in 1190, he named William co-regent, tasking him with governing England during his absence. Thrust into newfound responsibility, William steered the kingdom with unshakable resolve. During the Third Crusade, Richard was captured by Leopold V, Duke of Austria, and handed over to Henry VI, Holy Roman Emperor, who demanded a staggering sum for his release. As co-regent, William Marshall focused on ensuring England's stability and security, while others, like Richard's mother, Eleanor of Aquitaine, worked tirelessly to raise the ransom needed for Richard's freedom. Meanwhile, Richard's brother John conspired with Philip II of France to usurp the throne. History comes alive as Richard the Lionheart makes his triumphant return to England, foiling his brother John's rebellion, backed by Philip II of France. The paragon of loyalty, William Marshall, played a crucial role in preserving the kingdom's stability during Richard's absence and securing the realm's integrity. As Richard's reign entered its twilight, William was invited to a grand tournament. William skillfully bested opponent after opponent, their swords clashing and the crowd roaring. With every victory, William's reputation grew, solidifying his position as an indispensable force in the kingdom. In the tournament's final match, William faced Hugh de Lusignan once more. The clash of steel echoed as they fought with unrivaled ferocity. In the end, William emerged victorious, earning both vindication for his uncle and the admiration of his peers. Yet as the kingdom seemed to settle, 
The growing discontent among the barons threatened to upend everything. History remembers Richard's death by a crossbow bolt in 1199. John, his brother, became king and faced many troubles. He lost Normandy to France after a disastrous battle. He angered the Pope by rejecting his archbishop and was excommunicated. He was suspected of murdering his nephew Arthur, who had a claim to the throne. William Marshall served John faithfully despite the challenges. He was a respected leader among the nobles and a wise counselor to the king. He helped John sign the Magna Carta in 1215, a document that granted rights to the barons and limited the king's power. He said to John, My lord, you must accept these terms for the sake of peace and justice. But peace did not last long. The barons rebelled and invited the French king to invade England. John tried to fight back, but he fell ill and died of dysentery in 1216. He left behind a troubled kingdom and a young son, Henry III, who was only nine years old when he became king. History witnessed the Battle of Lincoln on the 20th of May, 1217, a decisive clash in the First Barons' War. William Marshall, regent of Henry III, led a relief force to break the siege of Lincoln Castle by Louis VIII. He divided his army into three divisions, attacking from different directions, surprising the enemy and causing confusion. The battle was fierce and bloody. Thomas, the Count of Perche, the French commander, was killed by a crossbow bolt. The French and rebel forces were routed and fled the city. Marshall pursued them, capturing many prisoners, including rebel barons. This turning point weakened Louis's position and boosted Henry's morale. It showcased Marshall's courage and leadership, earning him the titles Greatest Knight and Hammer of the French. Marshall's victories at Lincoln and Sandwich forced Louis to negotiate peace with Henry III in September 1217, renouncing his claim to the English throne. Marshall died at the age of 72 in 1219, having served five kings and forever changing England's history.